Hi, this is Amy. Thanks for stopping by. Um, I'm actually decided to start selling some painted glassware again in my shop with my bridal hangers. Did this in the past and then cut it out because I was so busy and now really miss painting on glassware and since I want to do videos I figure why not go ahead and start offering two types of glasses. Just keep it simple. Uh, really not doing too much as far as custom glassware at this time. Pretty much just selling what I'm actually creating. Right now is a sample of the glass I will be using. I do like to use Libby glass and I have a 6 ounce flute and a 10 ounce all purpose wine glass. What I'm going to start to do tonight is just uh, take you through the first step. I'm going to do a base coat of burnt umber folk art enamel paint using a 3 8 inch brush for the Glass Art by Dynasty, number 71 brush. I'm going to coat those and then uh, move on, let those dry, and then come back and show you then the next step uh, to the process. It will probably be about four or five steps before it's actually complete. So tonight I'm going to start off by base painting the glasses. And this is done in a random fashion where I really don't like to be precise and if you've watched a lot of my videos you'll see that I just kind of like to do maybe a swervy little top to the painted glassware and I'm going to just put on a, a nice base coat right now. My intention by the time these are done is, is to actually be crackling ivory paint over the top of these and then painting my rose pattern on it it will go with a shabby chic hanger that I offer in my bridal hangers with a painted flower which the design is rose the flower itself can be changed to something else if, if somebody's needing a, a slightly different color or different flower you know that's fine I'm pretty flexible as far as that goes so Basically, you just put on a nice, nice coat of the brown. This will be the underneath coat that shows once the ivory is placed on top of the crackle medium. Kind of like the hangers are, the crackle medium is applied towards the walnut hangers. So that when you put the ivory on top of that, it will show you know the brown that's underneath you know, the brown wood and again like I said this is just a random thing if you want to be precise and mark off the top you can use tape you can you know some people will use rubber bands I just like the look of just kind of a random top because I think if you do like a little scallopy kind of edge to it it is really pretty maybe a little fancier than just doing a straight top a little chunk of paint there. Get that out of there. All right. Now I'll just try to keep it towards the, you know, right at the base of the bowl of the glass. Leave the stem free because I'll be painting that as well. I like so when you do just a random kind of a top to it if you want to add more swerviness to it less more whatever you want to do just go ahead and do it at this time before it dries and however far down you want to come on the stem you can leave the stem plain if you want now that's nice too but in the past I've liked to actually do my stems and sometimes I'm often painted things on the actual base of the the glass too just to make it a little bit more interesting more elegant more interesting
Yeah, I love these brushes by Dynasty. They are so easy to get a nice coat of paint on in one layer of paint as opposed to having to allow your paint to dry and then come back over it. You know, typically with your regular like one stroke brushes or regular paint brushes that might be the case. But with these they're awesome. Alright, we'll just continue on. And remember with your glassware, what I did on mine is I hand washed it. A lot of people will opt to uh, clean the glass with rubbing alcohol. And that's fine too. The main thing is to clean it so that you're getting any, any dust, fingerprints, oil, that kind of thing from the glassware being handled off of the glass before you paint over it. Again, I'm just coming down on the stem where I think I want to make a stop before I add another color to the base of the glass, or the stem of the glass, I should say. not very hard to do and honestly what I'm doing with these if you wanted just to make glassware that just had a crackle look to it you can do that and not even paint the flower on it so really just about anybody can do it it's also make fun glasses for wedding parties um, for my son's wedding, I did champagne glasses and beer glasses. Just did a variety. If you know, like at our wedding uh, for the kids, it was going to be beer and wine as far as the alcoholic beverages. And so that's why I chose to do the glassware that I chose. And then it was a nice little keepsake gift for the the people afterwards that they could take the glasses home and use them. Now, as far as baking your glassware, I do recommend that you place your glassware on the top shelf of a dishwasher or hand washing them actually will keep the design looking nicer for a longer period of time. If you have a dishwasher that, now this may sound silly, but that is maybe a commercial grade dishwasher, extremely high heat, I would hand wash. Um, you know, just to preserve the design, because to be honest with you, I have, have given glassware to people, have told them that, and I'm not sure if they're either not listening or they have chosen to uh, put it in a dishwasher that maybe is more on a commercial side of a dishwasher as opposed to, you know, family. And a lot of the glassware paint is melted off, and that's what will happen if you put it on the bottom rack of, of a dishwasher. Shouldn't do that if it's in the top rack, and if it's just a regular, you know, regular dishwasher, not commercial grade should be fine. I have glassware that I use all the time that put it in the microwave, put it in the dishwasher, and it's held up really nicely. So that's why I say when they say, oh no, we put it on the top shelf, you know, we do that. I'm thinking, oh, I'm not too sure. Either that or, or you have a dishwasher that is extremely hot and it's melting the paint off regardless. And that's not what you like to see when you put a lot of work into painting a gift for somebody. See your hard work um, 
It's in the bottom of their dishwasher. Okay. Uh, continue on here. And as, as always, when you're doing painted glassware and you're going to bake it, it's very important to put it in an oven that has not been turned on yet. The oven's completely cold. Then I typically will preheat the oven. Everybody's oven is different. Um, preheat time can be typically anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes. And you really need to add that time to your bake time. And then once you do, you bake it, then make sure you allow it to cool down before you pull it out. Reason being, the reason glass breaks is the quick temperature change. And I honestly have not had any problem with any glassware breaking following these rules. So I definitely feel it's very, very important to follow what the manufacturer is saying as far as your glassware and the paint that you're using. Because all the paints are different. They behave differently, meaning that I can get more of an opaque, opaque look out of this kind of glassware and do the one stroke type painting style. But then when it comes to paint such as Peebo and uh, um, the latex glossy, I find that, for me at least, especially the Peebo, that is more of a uh, stained glass look. There might be te techniques that you can use to make it not be like that, but I've never figured it out. And I also find that it's hard for me not to get a lot of bubbles in my work trying to use the one stroke. So I'm I'm imagining that it's probably easier just doing, you know, single single color painting or if you're putting any paint with it not making a lot of wiggle wiggle designs with it. Maybe that causes the bubbling or the bubbles in the paint. Now what I recommend too is that when you're doing these different layers of paint that you do allow these to dry in between coats. Um, I would probably say with the time frame for me it's probably going to be 24 hours before I get back to do another, the next section um, just to allow the paint time to dry in between what you're doing the different coats that you're putting on it. Like I said, this is no, no rocket science to this. It's mainly going to be just an undercoat to be used um, so that you can see the contrast between the ivory paint and the brown on, like on my hangers. Next, so I'm just quickly doing this. Um, trying to get these done so I can start selling them, especially with the holidays coming up. Like I said, things that you can do as far as if you want to put more of a straighter top to this and not be so random, people will use painter tape. Um, I know that some people will put you know, rubber bands around it, you know, around the top, trying to give it a cutoff point. I do know too that it is recommended to try to keep the paint down from the actual lip of the glass so that people drinking from it are not actually coming into contact with the paint. I um, have done a lot of research on this and 
the main reason is the paint is non-toxic, but if there's cracks in the paint, that can allow bacteria to hide. So that can be um, a, a problem for somebody if they're you know, drinking from a glass and there's bacteria. So if you put it down for enough to where they don't have to worry about that, then uh, yeah. All right, well welcome back. Uh, the next step to uh, doing my crackled painted glasses is actually applying the clock the crackle medium. Today I'm using the Weather Crackle Effect by Martha Stewart Crafts. And simply, you're just going to brush just a nice little coat of it over what you've painted as your base coat. And just make sure you cover it well. And then you're going to allow it to dry. And I would say at least for an hour, if not longer, to make sure that it crackles properly once you apply the the next coat over the top of the the glassware. Pretty easy to do. Like I said, I, I think um, really at this part of it anybody could do and still create a nice looking glass even if you didn't want to paint any type of a design over the top of it. You know, I like to try to find things that people can actually do on their own also. Now, you may choose not to and just want to buy them, which is fine. You know, I appreciate that as well. But I think it's kind of fun to share the different techniques. And I know, too, with painting on glass, it's something where you really need to do some practicing on your own try some different products because there are a lot of different products out on the market to determine what works best for your painting technique, your painting style. Uh, because some of the products out there don't work well for how I paint because I do a lot of the one stroke type of painting and when you're doing a lot of the wiggling and all that that you need to do with your brush it can create bubbles and it's not a situation where the bubbles go away and look nice when it's once it's said and done because you'll see some bubbles in this too but it really won't be noticeable once I'm done but in some of the other products it really was noticeable and I think those have a tendency to be more for people that are going to paint each step individually allowing drying time in between and then continuing to coat and you know get your end results once you're done with all the different steps whereas with the way I paint I like to get it done as quickly as possible you know I used to paint thousands of pieces of glass and I just didn't have time to be using a product that needed to allow all this specific drying time and all that in between coats or that I even needed to do that. And I've been using the Folk Art Enamels for quite some time and like I said before you know the main thing is to keep in mind you know treat it like fine china. You know you wouldn't just handle fine china any old way you would be careful with how you're handling it and how you're cleaning it and that type of thing and that's pretty much with you know your hand painted pieces if you treat them well they're going to last and be around for years to come if you're rough with them and you don't treat them well and take the time to wash them or uh, as I mentioned you know putting them on the top rack of a dishwasher if that's what you choose to do as long as you know that your dishwasher is not, obviously it's going to heat up, but there are some that are actually considered commercial grade, and those can be way too hot for painted glassware. And I would not recommend you doing that. Especially if you put a lot of hard work into painting something, you really don't want to see it, all the paint come off. 
and unfortunately it's not as durable as if you're doing uh, kennel, you know, ken, ken, um, you know, kiln firing and that type of thing as you would in, in a lot of clay products, you know, where you're painting and, and firing the product. It's, it's not as durable. Although, the thicker you put the paint on, the more durable it does become. But then you have to be cautious, too, that you're not layering the paint on too thickly because that can also bubble. And when it bubbles, it's not very pretty. That can definitely totally ruin your design. So don't recommend that either. You just have to be cautious with it. And trial and error. Just keep in mind too, it's kind of a cheap process really because you can get cheap glassware. I mean, like I said, this is Libby, Libby glass. And even with that, it's not uh, expensive. You know, I can go to Old Time Pottery or buy directly from the company. And I've done that too when I was painting tons and tons of it uh, and have it delivered. And it's reasonably priced. So, you know, too, you got to remember when you're painting on glass, well, even if it, after it dries, I mean, if you soak it in water and put some uh, dishwashing soap on it, you can actually still get the paint off of it. Because that's one thing, too, you shouldn't do is allow it to sit in water because that will allow the paint to loosen up and come off. Anyways, there you go. Um, that's the next step. And uh, I will continue on with the next step will be to apply the outer coating, which will then show the crackled design. Thank you. Alright, so now it's time to apply the outer coat of ivory colored paint that will actually be doing the crackling. And I'm going to start by just using a flat brush. On this one I don't need to use um, the uh, type of brush that I was using to do the actual base coating of the brown. Um, and you have to move rather quickly on this. In order to get it to cover nicely. It takes a little bit of time for the paint to actually be completely crackled. I mean, not too long, but um, it will continue to crackle a little bit until it's completely done. It takes a few minutes. Hardest part about doing this is keeping the paint moving while you're uh, trying to get it applied here because it starts to crackle and then it can leave these little spots here that I'm getting. Just be careful when you're touching paint that's already been applied because it, it will kind of botch up on you. Try not to apply too much pressure, as that can cause it to.
then once you get this applied, then I would allow it to to sit and dry uh, to for at least an hour. I was trying not to put it on too thickly. And I did add some flow medium to my paint, trying to help it with the flow of it onto the actual glass. I'm trying not to go back over already painted areas too much. Just keep applying it all around, just trying to do it as quickly as you can. I guess that this is the hardest part, really. Here's my last one. And just remember, you know, when you're painting on glass, if you don't like it, soak the glass and take it off and start again. Easy peasy. And it's okay if you go outside the, uh, out above the actual brown paint. Because you can always put something along that line, whether it's a, an actual straight line or it's a dotted line, something to that effect. Uh, but you can see, you know, how it's crackling. Like I said, and if you're you're not happy with it, I got a little bit on the stem here. I'll have to wipe off, but or on the base here, I'll have to wipe that off. Accidentally touched my brush on it, but it's pretty. I mean, it it'll look nice. You know, once you get it painted, um, you know, just kind of as a random a random design. 
And so we'll let this dry and then uh, the next step will be to actually start painting the flowers on it. Alright, today I'm going to show you how I finish these glasses. As, uh, as of today, I went ahead and painted the uh, two flutes and one of the wine glasses because I figured it's going to uh, be a little bit of a process so I wasn't going to take the time to paint all four of them at one time for you. Figured doing one, one is probably sufficient. And look how pretty this set would be with this bridal hanger that I saw a lot of. I mean, I have a uh, quite a demand for this particular design. So I figure the wine glasses or the, the toasting flutes to go with them will be a nice added touch. So like I said, today I'm going to go ahead and show you how to finish these off. I decided to just go ahead and put the dots around the top and around the, the base so that it gives it a little bit of a finished look, but it's not going to take the time it would take to actually paint the stem. And it's still is a pretty gloss. Like I said, you can you know, opt to choose to paint your stem. A lot of times I will actually paint a design around the bottom or do the dots and stuff down here so that the entire gloss is painted from basically top to bottom. But in the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and, and paint these very quickly today just to give you an idea of what you might be able to do with yours. So to get started, I'm going to start off by painting my roses, and I'm just going to do a, just a very easy pattern. Again, when you're painting your roses, I'm kind of following a, kind of a one stroke, but then also putting my own touch into it. I've painted this style for so long that, and I think many painters will find this, that they actually come up with their own technique. So, you know, again, don't have to follow mine. If you have a way or you're better at doing the roses your own way, go to it. Uh, it just it doesn't have to be precise. Again, it's your your gloss. Make it yours using your own design. Now, once I get done painting these, I am going to allow them to dry at least an hour, at least an hour before I would bake these depending on what paint you choose to use. Follow the manufacturer's instructions that are provided on each bottle. I know I get a lot of questions from people about, well, you know, how long do you do this or that? You know, look at, look at the back of the bottle and see what the manufacturer recommends because all glass painting products are different. Um, some, like the folk art, you don't even have to bake. It can merely be sat out and dried, cures within 21 hour, or 21 days, dried to the touch, uh, typically within an hour or two. Also, when you're doing yours, you know, the pattern can vary from one gloss to the next even. Yeah, I don't, you know, I do them similarly, but they're definitely not the same. And I don't even try to say that they're going to be, because I get bored. And like I said, I'll, you know, make them similar, but don't expect them to be identical. Now on this design, then I'll just turn the glass around and paint. I basically I'm painting two buds on each side of the of the main rows. And remember too, I am a lefty, so you may be starting in a different direction than what I'm doing, and that's fine. If you don't like how, like I said, I like how this started out, you know, you can always go over it and make it more defined. Play with it. Well, it doesn't have to be perfect. 
As long as you're happy with it, that's what matters. I guess I'm just doing a very quick little rose just to show you how I go about finishing them. In this particular style of glass design that I'm doing here is a little lengthier one because of the steps that you have to take in order to do the crackling and, and all that. You know, honestly, if you just wanted to paint this design on just the bare glass, I've done a lot of those like that too, and that works out just fine as well. Very pretty. People tend to like those. Sold a lot of those in the past. Because in my painting style is just kind of a combination of what I learned in doing a lot of one stroke and then just kind of my own my own little touch and like I said I'm doing this rather quickly so it may not be as neat as what I would typically paint just wanted to give you an idea of a pattern that you could possibly paint on your own just keep that in mind Okay, so now that part is done, my next step is to go back and add the leaves. Now, if I were doing this and having more time to do them, I would personally leave some drying time just to You know, try not to pull too much of the original color, but it's okay. It's also okay to pull some of that color you know, from the rose in. If you do, it's, that's not an error. That just gives it some extra, extra interest. And with these, I'm just randomly putting the leaves from one gloss to the next. They will not be in identical positions. Again, they might be similar but not identical and that's just how I paint I guess what, you, what you'll find if you're just beginning you know, try out the different paints you know, see what works best for the type of painting style you have we're not all the same some are better than others some do you know just the basic building on the pattern as far as doing base coating and then they will add uh, more depth to it. Some people will just do basic one color painting and that's okay too. You know what it's just it's a matter of your preference it's not wrong or right it's whatever you choose to do Like I said, I'm not a big one to say, oh my god, you didn't do that right. I, I really don't like that. Sure, your creativity, your style, your design, make it yours, and don't apologize for it either. You know, you can maybe you know, see other people's painting, take away something from it, or <laughs> feel like, hey, I never want to paint like them. That's fine too. Very flexible. And I'm not a big person to make fun of somebody else's work. Um, I think that, you know, if you're happy with it, if you're just learning, there's always room for learning. Always, always, always. No matter how good of a painter you are, how long you've been doing it, Especially in today's market, there's always new products coming out, things to make your painting easier, uh, make it to where more people can actually do it and be successful or feel successful with it. Just amazing. You know, even if you're a stenciler, hey, that's how I started out stenciling everything. I didn't do anything freehand. 
nothing. Now it's like, ah, uh, I don't want to do. Like, say, on this one, I feel like I have some room to add some extra leaves, then add them. If you find you've got a spot that seems a little bare, add. It's fine. Perfectly fine. And there you go. Okay, and then the last step, I basically just use the back end of my brush to add the dots. And try not to make them, that's one thing I need to practice more on, is try not to make them too thick because it's possible they will bubble when you bake them. And you can make them as far apart as you want, as close together as you want. It's really just a matter of you know, you put one color, two colors, and you could go back in and I make some of the, the berry wine. Also, too, I used basically two flat brushes to paint this design so I didn't have to rinse out my brushes during the, the taping of the video. And um, I used berry wine, wicker white, thicket green, gold, and the, f the moss green, all of the folk art enamels. Okay, so I have that design there. And basically on the bottom, I'm going to first start off just by going around 